everybody. You know what? There is so many iconic incidents in the history of the WWE universe that I reckon I could isolate an ideal index for every single letter of the alphabet. And that is what we are doing. My name is Tom Campbell and this is the letter I on the A to Z of WWE. So today's letter is I, as in, I walk for miles inside this pit of danger. Dave Batista, who started wrestling in 1999, joined Ohio Valley Wrestling as the menacing Leviathan. He made his WWE television debut as Deacon Batista, the assistant to Reverend Devon. Now, didn't quite set the world on fire until he aligned himself with Ric Flair and later on as part of Evolution, an absolute monster on the Monday Night Raw roster who really made a name for himself and made an impact in the wrestling world by winning the 2005 Royal Rumble. He gave the thumbs up and the thumbs down to then his leader, Triple H, as he left Evolution and went on to become the World Heavyweight Champion. Since then, Dave Batista has, to paraphrase his theme music, walked alone, winning the World Heavyweight and WWE Championships across his time in WWE. He left to pursue a career in MMA, but found himself in Hollywood instead, where now he is a household name as Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. Whilst Dave Batista won a lot of belts in the WWE, this next I is one that he didn't get his hands on, as I is for Intercontinental Championship. Formed in 1979 when Pat Patterson merged the North and South American Championships in a tournament in Rio de Janeiro that didn't actually happen. The Intercontinental title is normally a showcase of who is next to be the top dog in the company. Guys like the Ultimate Warrior, the Macho Man, Randy Savage, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, The Rock, Steve Austin, Chris Jericho all held this belt before going on to win the big one. The man who's held that belt the most times would be the aforementioned Chris Jericho, who's bagged it nine. However, the one that's held it the longest that would be the Honky Tonk Man. 454 days he reigned as the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time. Thank you very much. When we talk about duration in wrestling, we have to talk about our next eye, the Iron Man match. 60 minutes to get as many decisions as you can to crown yourself the winner. Pinfalls, submissions, countouts, DQs. Hey, as long as you've got more points than the other at the end of the match, you're the winner. The first Iron Man match was at WrestleMania 12 that saw Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels for the WWF Championship. A match that went to a time limit draw. Not one single fall between them. And it was only in sudden death where Shawn Michaels was able to put away Bret Hart and win his first ever WWF title. Other Iron Man classics across the years include The Rock vs Triple H at Judgment Day 2000, a match that would see the return of The Undertaker after an extended absence. Also check out Brock Lesnar vs Kurt Angle from 2003, a Smackdown main event for the ages. And history was made at NXT TakeOver Respect when Sasha Banks took on Bayley in a 30 minute Iron Woman match. Before takeover pay-per-views, we have this next eye in your house. WWF wanted some short form, slightly cheaper pay-per-view events that could go on between the Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam and Survivor Series. So In Your House was born. The In Your House shows ran from 1995 through to 1999 where the In Your House strap was quietly dropped and just replaced by the name of said pay-per-view. Now whilst In Your House didn't feature like your premier matches from the time, there are some wonderful hidden gems on In Your House shows, including a no-holds-barred match that really changed the industry between Shawn Michaels and Diesel and In Your House Good Friends Better Enemies. We saw Mankind get a crack at the WWF Championship in 1996 against Shawn Michaels at In Your House Mind Games. And we cannot talk about In Your House without mentioning the 1997 Canadian Stampede that saw the Hart Foundation representing Canada in a massive 10-man tag. We're going to talk about arguably the WWF's big Biggest missed opportunity here as I is for Invasion. When the World Wrestling Federation purchased World Championship Wrestling in 2001 for practically pennies, Shane McMahon was installed as the on-screen owner of WCW. Add to this Stephanie McMahon becoming the on-screen owner of ECW and forging an alliance 
with WCW to take the WWF down, you have the storyline that dominated the majority of 2001. At the WWF Invasion pay-per-view, for the very first time, we saw WCW versus WWF. This was the rivalry that fans of the Attitude Era were chomping at the bit to see, but... Mm, instead of getting Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Goldberg, instead of getting the NWO versus D-Generation X, we got the APA versus Chuck Palumbo and Sean O'Hare. And we got Stone Cold Steve Austin joining the alliance of WCW and ECW. Cool! So following the Invasion pay-per-view, we had superstars going back and forth, defecting from one to the other. We had championship matches out the wazoo, because by the way, the WCW titles are all still in play at this point. So we have about 47 title matches every episode of Monday Night Raw, and 400 title changes that in the grand scheme of things didn't mean a lot. Now there were a few bright stars that were born during the Invasion. Guys like Rob Van Dam and Booker T shone relatively brightly, despite seemingly always uh, being one-upped by T. Team WWF, but this is all generally considered a bit of a misfire from WWF. This could have been a rivalry that could have lasted for years, spawned off thousands of dream matches, made the company billions as opposed to millions, but say la vie. When a pinfall simply won't do it, we move to our next I, the I Quit match. No count outs, no disqualifications, no pinfalls. The only way to win is to get your opponent to grab the house mic and scream in a loud voice, I quit. It is the ultimate humiliation for a wrestler to literally say to his opponent, to his heated adversary, I can't take any more of what you're doing, please end the match. Now there were I Quit matches held away from the WWF, but the first one held in the company was at WrestleMania 11, pitting Bob Backlund against Bret the Hitman Hart, when Bret Hart made Bob Backlund say I quit whilst locking him in the cross-faced chicken wing. Well, we think he said I quit, he kind of just gurgled like, ah! and then said something about seeing a light. One of the most brutal I Quit matches in WWF history came at 1999's Royal Rumble, when The Rock, following a barrage of chair shots, made Mankind say I Quit. Turns out he didn't, and The Rock simply played a recording of Mankind saying I Quit from an episode of Monday Night Raw. Cheeky. Also in 2006, Mick Foley and Ric Flair had an ego-driven bloodfest at SummerSlam, which ended with Ric Flair trying to push a barbed wire baseball bat through Mick Foley's face, forcing Foley to scream, I quit. I quit matches very rarely for the faint-hearted. Another match not for the faint-hearted is our next I, the Inferno match. The Undertaker and Kane's red hot rivalry saw the metaphorical flames higher than ever as these two took their burning hatred for one another into the center of the ring and surrounded the ring with fire. The rules of an Inferno match are simple. You have to set your opponent on fire to win. Despite this being Kane's trademark match, he didn't win many of them. In fact, he only ever won one of them to date. At Armageddon 2006, when he faced MVP, and we saw Montel Vontavious Porter set alight. From boiling hot to stone cold, I is for Ice Dagger. One of the many stupid names that WWF writers came up with when Steve Austin was pitching his new character. And the WWF writers took the chilling aspect of that sentence a little bit too seriously. As well as the aforementioned ice dagger, they offered up things like Chili McFreeze, Fang McFrost, Otto Von Ruthless. Okay, good work, lads. It wasn't until Steve Austin's wife at the time told Steve to drink his tea before it goes stone cold that we had the birth of Stone Cold Ice Dagger. Steve Austin, Steve Austin. I is also for Ivory. You've seen Glow, haven't you, on Netflix? Well, Ivory 
is the company's real life connection to the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, where Ivory worked before joining the WWF. She started off as a valet for Mark Henry and D'Lo Brown before showing off her true wrestling acumen, becoming the WWF Women's Champion. In a time where the WWF Women's Division lacked a lot of strong female performers, Ivory was there uh, to keep things moving. She joined the Right to Stencer faction in 2000 and started an intense rivalry with the ninth wonder of the world China, who we will get to a little bit later in this list. Ivory was last seen as part of the WWE Evolution pay-per-view, where she was eliminated by Asuka, but she really held her own in that Battle Royal match, and also she is now a proud member of the WWE Hall of Fame. So that's I on our A to Z of WWE. Next time I see you, you won't be able to see me! Bye! Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section and down below. You can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Lastly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.